As the 20th century dawned, all fabrics were natural. But chemists had a dream to develop and manufacture new materials with exceptional properties. Two Swiss-born brothers, Camille and Henry Dreyfus, pursued that dream while working on their PhDs in chemistry at the University of Basel. They started with cellulose, the tough, insoluble fiber found in trees. Henry Walter, foundation president and member of the Dreyfus family, explains how they began. The first uh innovation was trying to replace cellulose nitrate and produce something that wasn't as flammable. The answer was cellulose acetate. But before they could develop it into a fiber, World War I broke out. The Dreyfus brothers provided the Allies with non-flammable coatings for airplanes. After the war, they did something like 20,000 experiments resulting in a fiber that could be woven and dyed. Their company, Selenies, became a pillar of the synthetic textile industry. By mid-century, the company grew to be one of the world's largest. Their dyeable, award-winning silk-like fiber became a fashion staple. Cellulose is very difficult to use. You have to act on it very vigorously. The Dreyfus brothers broke it down with acetic anhydride. Acetate reacts with hydroxyl groups on cellulose sugars so that cellulose acetate now becomes soluble in a whole range of solvents, making it a lot easier to shape and form. One important use was movie film, which solved a huge problem for the movie industry because earlier versions of uh, movie film would burst into flames. Cellulose acetate is still in use today in product design and in 3D printers. Henry died in 1944. In his memory, Camille started the Dreyfus Foundation in 1946, explaining why in a letter. We shared together the sweat and tears of labor and disappointment and the joys of achievement. Henry was to me my loyal, true, and dearly beloved brother. In 1949, the name of the foundation was changed to the Camille and Henry Dreyfus Foundation to link both brothers forever in promoting chemistry, the field they loved so well. Camille Dreyfus knew what he wanted the foundation to do. He said the foundation's goals were to advance the science of chemistry, chemical engineering, and related sciences as a means of improving human circumstances and relations. The foundation programs are designed to identify scientists at important stages of their careers. The, the important thing for the Dreyfus Foundation is not to see the future, but rather to enable the future to unfold. One program is the Environmental Postdoctoral Fellowship. That was in many ways a gateway to allow PhDs in physical chemistry, for example, to move directly into an arena that collided basic science with public policy change. The Dreyfus Prize recognizes major chemistry achievements with a $250,000 award. One characteristic of the Dreyfus Prize is that it's an area which uh, transcends subdisciplinary boundaries. The inaugural prize was awarded to Harvard materials chemist George Whitesides in 2009. I'd say George Whitesides is one of the best in the world in taking achievements from one area of chemistry and applying them in another area. The virtue of chemistry is that, is it easy? I don't know whether it's easy, but it is always interesting. Our task, and one of the things that the Dreyfus Foundation has been very good at doing, is to provide the safety for the young people to at least try some of those things. And I think the community has to be enormously grateful to institutions like Dreyfus for making that possible. The Teacher Scholar Program supports young professors who have proven themselves early in their careers as researchers and teachers. Two very distinguished current board members received Dreyfus Teacher Scholar Awards in the early 1980s. Marianne Fox eventually became the chancellor of the University of California, San Diego. Matthew Terrell is now leading the University of Chicago's first engineering school. 
many teacher scholars went on to win some of chemistry's highest awards. And today's teacher scholars are equally talented. They are pushing the frontiers of chemistry. The Dreyfus brothers' legacy lives on. Both brothers felt that chemistry could help improve the world. The Camille and Henry Dreyfus Foundation focuses entirely on chemistry. So in that way, we are distinct. For the size of the foundation, which is substantial but not enormous, it has a tremendously positive impact on the chemical sciences and on the public appreciation of what chemistry can do for humanity. Good afternoon to all of you. For those who don't know me, my name is Vanda Andreoni, and I'm Professor Emeritus at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Dreyfus Prize Award ceremony in honor of Professor Michele Parinello. I feel that in this moment, I represent a vast community of scientists around the world whose scientific endeavors and achievements rest on and have greatly benefited from the groundbreaking foundation Michele has provided. Those who have had the privilege to collaborate with him and the great pleasure to be his friends we are all particularly happy today that the, in pursuit of uh, its mission of uh, rewarding uh, breakthroughs in chemical sciences, the Dreyfus Foundation has recognized Michele Parinello's uh, fundamental contribution to science. His methods have permeated a wide range of disciplines previously exclusive domain of the respective specialists, extending from theoretical chemistry to condensed matter physics, material science, nanoscience, to geophysics and planetary chemistry. He has thereby given us the tools, as well as a unified perspective to tackle a vast world of challenges with unforeseeable depth. All the while, he has time and again led the way with pioneering and far-reaching applications. From the human side of things, Michele's impact has made our scientific interactions more widespread and our scientific life altogether more fun. Thank you, Michele. Thank you for constantly being an enthusiastic and tireless leader. And especially thank you for proving once more the incommensurable value of unfettered curiosity in research all more vital in this nebulous, transformative era. And now it is my pleasure to give the floor to the rector of the USI, Università della Svizzera Italiana, Professor Boas Erez. Caro professor Parinello, eh, cara signora Parinello, caro presidente della Fondazione Camille Henry Dreyfus, cari membri eh, del Board of Directors della Fondazione, caro consigliere di Stato, caro rappresentante della città di Lugano, caro presidente dell'Accademia delle Scienze, 
caro Presidente dell'ente ospedaliero cantonale, caro Vicepresidente dell'ETA, cara Presidente dell'Università della Svizzera Italiana, caro Past President dell'Università della Svizzera Italiana, dear Professor Mayor, dear Professor Ward, caro Signor Mantegazza, cari rappresentanti del mondo economico e dell'impresa, cari rappresentanti dei media, cari colleghi, signore e signori. Please allow me to continue in English. <laughs> What a relief. Huh? <laughs> Now, so the question I want to address is, what is the difference between a major league institution or a ma minor league institution, or what is the difference between a major league researcher and a minor league researcher? Now, thinking about this, I was thinking about, maybe because this is an American foundation, I was thinking about a, a movie, a baseball movie, uh, where I think this limit is well represented. This movie is Bull Durham, which has been considered one of the best sports movie ever produced. In this film, you can see that the, the difference between major league and minor league is a very thin line. The baseball player played by Kevin Costner in this film, at some point says that he has spent the 20, 21 greatest days of his life in the major league, meaning he spent the rest of his life not in the major league, and he spent the rest of his life in the minor league trying to return to the major league. Now, the difference maybe between baseball and science is that usually when you get to the major league, you stay there, but this is not always the case. But certainly, Professor Parinello at some point became a major league player and has been, stayed a major league researcher. Of course, this doesn't mean that my university, Università della Svizzera Italiana, is a major league university. Still, many important and nice things happen by accident, so it seems. And indeed, it seems like an accident that we were given the opportunity to offer a position to Professor Parinello. But what I can assure you is that from that moment on, we have paid attention to Professor Parinello and have tried to offer him the best conditions for him to develop his important research activity. Now, having said this, I would like to stress that despite his stature, as this prize shows, Professor Parinello has not been very demanding. In fact, quite on the contrary, Professor Parinello has always appeared to me as a very modest person. Furthermore, as the attendance to today's ceremony shows, I should say once again, Professor Parinello is also very appreciated for his qualities in his community as a colleague, and one may say for his human qualities. So learning from him will certainly help us become a major league institution. And for all of these reasons, we're particularly proud and happy that we can share this moment with him and with you today. And so it is my pleasure to call up Henry C. Walter, the president of the Camille and Henry Dreyfus Foundation. Thank you very much. Director Erez, thank you so much for your warm introduction. I will follow your lead and speak in English. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Dreyfus community in the audience, and we have some board members, staff, and spouses, I want to say how happy we are to be in Lugana. 
We are grateful to all at USI, and I understand that uh, it's also referred to as Uzi, is that correct? Who have contributed to this event to honor <coughs> Professor Perinella as the winner of the 2017 Dreyfus Prize. Thank you for joining us. The Dreyfus Prize is awarded biennially and recognizes an individual for exceptional research in a selected area of the chemical sciences. It is always special to present the award at the institution of the award winner in the company of their family, friends, and colleagues. This is the first time the prize has been made to a scientist at an institution outside the United States, and we are fortunate indeed that Professor Perinella has given us this opportunity to come to Lugana. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you. Switzerland is a beautiful country to visit or live in. Personally, I'm always happy to visit because I was born in Switzerland, not far from here, but a few years ago, <laughs> many years ago. The Dreyfus brothers' formative and highly productive years in Switzerland laid the groundwork for their success. The history of the Dreyfus brothers was outlined in the video shown earlier, and I believe in the program. The Dreyfus Prize honors both the Dreyfus brothers and individuals who have made major contributions in the chemical sciences. I am sure the Dreyfus brothers would be proud of Professor Perinella's ingenuity and accomplishments which have transformed so many areas of science. It is a great pleasure to have the honor of presenting him with the 2017 Dreyfus Prize. Professor Perinello, would you please join me? First, I will read the citation. The Dreyfus Prize in the chemical sciences is awarded to Mikhail Perinella for his groundbreaking developments of molecular dynamics, simulation methodology, and associated landmark studies of chemical material and biomolecular molecular systems. Excuse me. <laughs> Professor Perinella, on behalf of the board of directors, of the Camille and Henry Dreyfus Foundation. It is my pleasure to present to you with this medal as the winner of the 2017 Dreyfus Prize in the Chemical Sciences. Me to cry? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Here is a framed uh, version of the citation for you to keep. We'll put it yeah. up there so you don't have to lug it around. And yep. uh, not to be forgotten, this is a check. <laughs> 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 Two hundred and fifty. I can tell you, it really hurts to have to turn this over to somebody else. But here's the check. Okay. It's the mon you. monetary Thank part of the award, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I now ask Matthew Tyrell to please come to the podium to introduce and describe some highlights of Professor Mar Marinello's scientific career. Dr. Tyrell is the dean and founding Pritzker, Pritzker director of the Institute for Molecular Engineering at the University of Chicago and a director of the Dreyfus Foundation. Well, it really is a distinct pleasure to introduce Michaela Perinello, the recipient of the 2017 Dreyfus Prize in the Chemical Sciences. Professor Perinello was born in Messina, Italy, and received his advanced degree in physics from the University of Bologna in 1968. He's held important research leadership positions in universities, national laboratories, and industry, including the University of Messina, the University of Trieste, the Argonne National Laboratory, the IBM Research Laboratories, the Max Planck Society, the ETH in Zurich, and now here at USI in Lugano. In addition to the recognition being bestowed today by the Dreyfus Foundation, Professor Perinello has been the recipient of numerous distinguished prizes and awards, many of which are cited in the program booklet for this event. He's also been awarded eight uh, honorary degrees from universities in Italy and abroad, and has been invited long-term visitor to dozens of universities around the world, and including two where I was working at the time, Minnesota and uh, Santa Barbara. The main focus of Professor Perinello's research has been to improve upon the molecular dynamics simulation technology, greatly expand its scope, and apply it in innovative and insightful ways to a variety of important problems. As the power of computers has increased, so has the popularity of atomistic-based simulations increased, and there's no area of chemistry, biology, material science, and many other fields in which simulations are not applied. Right up front, the vast impact of Professor Perinello, Perinello could be easily judged from his huge number of citations, somewhere between 60 and 70,000, depending upon the counting uh, agency and from the fact that hardly any paper that uses atomistic simulations, in particular those based on molecular dynamics, fails to cite one or more of his works, and if they do not, one feels that they should have. <laughs> Professor Perinello's contributions have been historical and defining contributions to the chemical sciences. A formative moment in Professor Perinello's career was his sabbatical at Argonne National Laboratory lasting almost two years, where he was introduced by Anis Rahman to atomistic molecular dynamics simulation. At that time, atomistic molecular dynamics was a discipline confined to a rather small group of scientists that required access to large computers and was rather limited in scope. During his time at Argonne, he developed the so-called perinello rahman method. This method allowed phase transitions between different crystalline states to be simulated under the condition of constant external stress. 
In order to appreciate the relevance of this work, one has to go back to the time when it was developed. In those days, atomistic molecular dynamic calculations were performed under conditions of constant volume. Paranello and Raman realized that by making the molecular dynamic cell vary in size and shape, entirely new classes of phenomena could be simulated. In a fashion that is typical of the way Professor Paranello conducts his research, he not only developed the method, but also applied it in interesting, in, in, to, to systems of interesting practical importance. This particular work is a paradigm of how Professor Paranello unified computer simulation with rigorous statistical mechanics in order to study key phenomena. Upon Professor Perinello's return to Trieste, where he had a permanent position, he was concerned about the ability of empirical force fields to describe the properties of materials. His quest for better pot potentials culminated in the development with Roberto Carr, who's here, of ab initio molecular dynamics, or the carr Perinello method, as it's commonly called. This method combines a density functional theory calculation of the interatomic forces with molecular dynamics in an elegant way. I'd like to note that in the nomination materials reviewed by the Dreyfus uh, Prize jury, the word elegant appeared again and again along with uh, variations on similar words. At the time, such a feat, this combination of density functional theory and molecular dynamics uh, appeared impossible and without exaggeration, its realization in the carr paranello method has revolutionized both the field of electronic structure calculations and of molecular simulation. The impact of this work has been enormous, bringing together communities that were separated, unifying statistical mechanics with quantum mechanics in the simulation field. Once this remarkable breakthrough was achieved, an enormous stream of applications followed both from Professor Perinello and from many, many others. One of the first applications uh, was to the melting of silicon, and it was shown that the ab initio molecular dynamics method was able to describe the change in bonding from semiconducting to metallic on melting, a process that's very hard to simulate using standard potentials. Another area of focus was on the properties of water and water solutions, and in particular, the study of the two water ions, H plus and OH minus, to give you a glimpse of the diversity of applications. Both of these uh, ab initio molecular dynamics uh, studies were landmarks achieved by this remarkable breakthrough in computer simulation uh, methodology. I believe this quick summary is more than sufficient to give you a flavor of why the Dreyfus Prize jury was overwhelmingly impressed with the accomplishments of Michele Perinello, and you've heard more than enough from, about his scientific accomplishments from me. So I would therefore like to invite Professor Perinello to the podium so that we can hear about his remarkable work in his own words. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, good afternoon. I'm, uh, of course, overwhelmed. I would like to thank uh, the, once more the Dreyfus Foundation and the jury that have chosen me uh, for this prize. As it was mentioned, it's the first time the prize goes to Europe, and also it's the first time uh, uh, that it's awarded to theoreticians, I believe. So that's a, that's a double, double hit there that make, uh, uh, makes me particularly proud. Uh, I think we... We can proceed now with the talk, and that's the title of my talk. And it's not like, as you think that that has to do with my evident uh, Italian accent. <laughs> but uh, it comes to something that somebody told me. Huh? You can learn to ski as an adult, uh, but uh, it is like speaking a language with an accent. You can do it, but it's never, huh? never quite right. Huh? Uh, uh, hopefully, my chemistry is not uh, as bad uh, as this one. It's, it's king. To understand why uh, I'm saying this, uh, I'm, I'm taking this uh, point of view, I would like to share with you uh, steps in my professional, in my 
scientific life. So I started studying physics uh, in Messina. And this was the physics uh, auditorium uh, in which uh, lesson, and I remember as a young man passing an exam on the very same desk there with a severe professor in front. And, and I love this, uh, this uh, you see there are these old, old, old uh, apparatus, uh, especially to do with the electricity, electrostatics, uh, machine that were supposed to produce sparks uh, and never did. And um, I, I want also, if you can kind of, uh, huh? can you recognize this chap here? Benito Mussolini. <laughs> so, <laughs> because this picture was taken, I, I, this very photo was taken from an album on the inauguration day of the university. And so that's uh, 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 why huh? El Duce was there. <laughs> this physics, but I mean, in spite of the age, I mean, it was identical as uh, when I went to the, the exam. I mean, this must have been in the 30s, so I, I'm not that old. So. I see, I, I find it lovely, but you know, everybody has his own strange taste. Uh, this is to be contrasted with the chemistry. Huh? That's how it is. I mean, you, you can imagine the usual, huh? uh, uh, the usual uh, uh, hodgepodge of uh, different things. And there was, of course, a persistent smell of solvent in this place. And that's when I had the, my first encounter with physics, with chemistry, sorry. Um, but there was immediately a difficulty. Huh? I, my, my average marks were the top uh, everywhere, huh? in all the subjects, but chemistry. And this was due to this molecule here. It's called the pyruvic acid. And I was asked, uh, what the hell, uh, what, I'm mean, sorry. What, <laughs> what is a pyruvic acid? And I didn't have the faintest idea. And so I, I, I still, I don't. So I went to Wikipedia. And so, so you, you, you can find out for yourself. Huh? It's called pyruvic, I understand, because it, it pyrus from Greek means you, you burn. Uh, Uva is grapes, you burn the grapes, and then out comes uh, this uh, nasty chemical. Uh, here you see the, how, how chemists represent a molecule. We come back to that, uh, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and, and, and this represents, uh, the line represents chemical modes. Okay, so first encounter was uh, really terrible. Huh? Worse could not have been. Uh, so, but I continued. So far away from chemistry, and I, while preparing this talk, I found a photocopy of a photocopy of my thesis. And I don't know whether you can read it, because it's very, I can't read it without my glasses, with my glasses on. So that's, uh, the title of my thesis was Rappresentazione Relativisticamente Invariante di Alcuni Stati Legati, which means in English, Relativistical invariant representation of bound states. Chemistry is, has to do with bound state, but this is a far cry from, uh, from the bound state that we talk about. But, uh, so th this was a thesis in uh, essentially elementary particle physics. So when I was a student there, there was kind of a hierarchy of discipline. Huh? They were, I mean, the real men would do theoretical, the theoretical physics uh, and uh, in the most abstract of way. Uh, anything practical or 
by practica I didn't mean anything that you can use uh, in, in the industry, eh? but practica meaning say if you do um, elementary particle, eh, if you try to study this particular reaction, you were already a chemist, <laughs> which will deem it to be the, <laughs> the lowest form of scientist possible. <laughs> okay. So, so, but then things happen. I mean, from bad things, uh, good things can happen. My professor there, which was, was, was a very intelligent man, uh, but he, he suffered uh, uh, from, uh, how you say, some kind of neurosis, uh, uh, um, and, and he disappeared for months on end. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I did my thesis on my own, so that's, I, 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 that thought we itself reliant. And then after my, my, my giving my thesis, uh, I had the top marks in spite of chemistry, and I, 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 I was expecting, uh, he promised, I'll call you, I'll call you, uh, come, uh, come in a month and I'll give you a position. I'm still waiting. <laughs> but from, from negative things, positive things happen. More or less at the same time, this gentleman here, Mario Tosi, who uh, uh, may spend up to that time had spent most of his la scientific life uh, in the States, had come back again to the uh, University of Messina, and there you can see where I, where I used to work. And, and there is, so this is from 1930, but again, it didn't, it was just a bit worse when I went there. <laughs> uh, you see, in those days, you see, the douche was a grand man, so <laughs> also, also everything had to be grand. And so the, the height uh, was enormous. Huh? So heating the stuff was very expensive. Uh, so the solution was that uh, they divided uh, these big, big, big rooms into two. Huh? So some of us would stay in, in the top part and the other <laughs> in the bottom part. <laughs> and I, I think, uh, I mean, I stayed uh, as, a, as a young man, stayed in the top part, and so with the light coming from the bottom, and you see I still wear glasses. <laughs> okay. There was uh, an important change because I started worrying about uh, many body uh, physics, condensed matter, statistical mechanics. What was, was, was uh, the, so I started going uh, from uh, the so the paradise uh, to the hell of chemistry. Okay, after a few years, uh, uh, I mean. Messina is a rather old university. I mean, it is probably older than any American university, but I wouldn't say it's quite as famous and uh, vibrant uh, as Harvard or Yale. Uh, so uh, I, I moved. I moved to the University of Trieste, and uh, the reason for moving to Trieste was the presence of this International Center for Theoretical Physics. And which is in a beautiful location. I, I think w this must have been uh, the, the window of my room. And from my room, I could look at the, at the Adriatic Sea. Very beautiful location. Never had uh, 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 an office as beautiful. And I, I shared my office with a person. It's been important, another person important in my life, Elio Tosati. So this was my office, we were staying here. Then uh, <coughs> Elio moved to some other, huh? uh, uh, some other office, and eventually I think uh, Roberto Carr came here, <coughs> and uh, in this room we argued about Carl Parinello. There was a striking difference between uh, Messina and uh, Trieste, especially ICTP, there were there was the constant flux of famous people, constant flux of famous people, and I have this uh, picture, which I'm very proud, but it's uh, quite accidental how we got it, but uh, you won't tell anybody, because this gentleman here is Paul Dirac, 
is a very famous physicist. I mean, it's, it's quite similar to having a picture with, the, with the Albert Einstein. Hmm? We're talking a bit of the, the big of science, the greatest of science. So that, well, I was exposed to millions of new ideas, uh, and uh, uh, my appetite in those days, my appetite for, for physics was voracious. I would be interested in everything, and still I am. Uh, and then came the turning point in my life, and uh, I, I went uh, for a couple of years uh, to Argonne National Laboratory in Chicago. <laughs> I enjoyed uh, very much uh, the Chicago winters. <laughs> and and uh, Anis is, is believed to be, and I think I, by many of us, uh, to be the founder of the molecular dynamics that is practiced here. Yeah. And, and we, wait, we wait, I love this photo, we, because it's a representative of our, I work together with, uh, with him all the time, sitting by the side. I was a total, uh, a disaster at programming, but he was very patient with me, and uh, and I, t I mean, he learned me, uh, he taught me essentially all that I know. Hmm? Uh, so now, a, a small digression because uh, uh, many times uh, I'm asked about uh, what do you do and why you do and so on, and it's always difficult to explain what one does uh, in. Uh, in simple terms, and we certainly it's not the occasion to go in, into depth here, but the molecular dynamics is a set of numerical techniques that allows the behavior of complex assembly of mo molecules, such as liquid, solid surfaces, and so on, to be simulated. Hmm? Uh, Your familiar fact that the computer can simulate the weather, uh, uh, so you can do the same uh, as uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with complex uh, molecular system. And we do this because we like to explain experiment, ex help experiment, replace possible experiment, predict new phenomena, provide insight, uh, and as we shall see, it's a kind of microscopy. Huh? Because you see, we see um, how on the computer how our atoms are uh, uh, are moving, uh, are behaving, uh, bonds are formed and broken. Okay, so in those days, we came up uh, with the, so, so I, 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 by pre in preparing this talk, I, I realized that my career can be summarized into four formulas. And so the first of this formula is this one, the parinello raman formula, which uh, we, we, we wrote down, to enable, to, you see still my high energy physics background. This is a Lagrangian, no? a concept which I think not many chemists are familiar with. Uh, this is a Lagrangian, and that uh, huh? was my, very much influenced by my original background. Using this formula, you can study the transformation of, uh, between different solids. And, uh, and I have uh, here an example of such transformation, but before showing that, uh, I will uh, uh, report here the number of citations per year that this paper is, is receiving. Huh? And, and the reason why I do that, not because I, I want to trump it, I mean, it, it, I think if I can be immodest, getting this prize it doesn't, uh, huh? Avoid that I should do that. I mean, uh, preempt it. Uh, but you see the pattern. Huh? At the beginning, it was very, very low. Then eventually, there's a growth, and now that's a, an exponential boom. The reason why I say it for the young students and the researchers that, that are in, in the audience that when I started with this work, uh, I mean, people was. Uh, were a bit con condescendent, uh, they, they made very sorry comments, uh, somebody thought it was all wrong, and uh, this is always uh, the trademark. I mean, if somebody tells you what you're doing is all wrong, it means you're on the right path. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So don't be discouraged. On time, sometimes, huh? It's a gentleman. Uh, I'll show here an example of this. Uh, so this is a crystal of benzene. And we can... Not Okay, so the atoms mean what? I, that was irresistible. So when I saw here these things, I said, okay, we need to put the Boccherini's minuet on top of it. And luckily, one of my collaborators, Giovanni Piccini, managed to do that. Huh? And it's quite appropriate, I think. Uh, so why, I think, why do you do it? Because it was said also by previous speaker, chemistry and physics are, are, are at the basis of what we do, and there are many problems in the contemporary society which need to be addressed, and science is the, the only way of going about it. And so the simulation are a pillar of chemistry without uh, without this simulation, I mean, the progress would be much slower. And, and there are three areas which I selected in which uh, people can resonate with, uh, uh, in which uh, the simulation can play a role, and quickly I'll go through three examples. One is uh, drug design, and uh, uh, there are two covers. Uh, so there was uh, some excitement uh, years ago because there was a, a, a compound, uh, a Gleevec, uh, uh, that seemed very promising for the cure of cancer, but then uh, the cancer is a nasty beast uh, and it induces mutations and, and, uh, and then it's no longer things. And even Newsweek uh, realized that uh, it requires understanding and not uh, blind search. Uh, this is a movie which is given to me by Francesco Gervas, who is in the audience. This object uh, represents uh, one protein that uh, if you block it, uh, uh, block it, uh, the cancer, uh, uh, cancer cell will not grow. And here is this uh, G-box, and there is a lot of water. Uh, we, this is an abstract uh, representation of the protein, just to give you an idea of its structure. But there are lots of atoms, it's all good. Uh, very packed uh, thing. And now we have uh, the G-Box, uh, which our friend who wants to go inside and kill uh, and stop uh, the activity of this protein. soundtrack of uh, a space odyssey. Okay, another area we're talking about environment. Uh, we don't want uh, CO2 production. I mean, we, CO2 is a, is a, is a culprit for, uh, for uh, global warming. So one idea of getting around the problem is to capture, uh, uh, capture the CO2 and uh, deposit it or transform it into other chemicals, uh, uh, which are not uh, dangerous. And you need to capture it, and this, uh, again, a Fanta uh, scientific picture has been provided to me as by Landa uh, Grezzacco in Jerusalem, who is here, and, and they have developed a clever way of capturing oxygen from the atmosphere so as to reduce uh, the, the global warming. Uh, 
hopefully. That comes from our work. It's a collaboration uh, with uh, the group of Ursula Rettelisberger. So we are all familiar with, uh, with the silicon uh, photovoltaic cell that uh, transform the solar light uh, into electric uh, uh, energy. Uh, there, uh, there's a problem of cost, a very promising, uh, promising uh, uh, candidate for, and cheap, for cheaper replacement are perovskite. And the quality, the, the, the ability of perovskite to transform into energy, the solar energy, into useful, uh, usable energy, the solar energy, it depends on the quality of crystals that are formed. And so we're studying the, the nucleation of a perovskite. This is in the liquid state. It's all very disordered. These uh, golden things, are, it, it's, it's again an abstract representation of the structure. So it's a disorder, and then out of the liquid comes uh, uh, a nice order, crystalline. OK. So it's a very important, but I mean, it's a limitation like everything in life. So there are challenges in, uh, because we want to study. Life is complicated, huh? more and more complex systems. Uh, so more realistically, uh, practically relevant system. We want to study for a long time and with highest uh, accuracy possible. And so then we come, uh, comes into the picture, and of course, last but not least, uh, in these things, it's always trying to make sense of what you find, which is applies to simulation and applies to many other endeavors in human life. So understanding what you do, I, I keep uh, saying, so what is people come and say, get a, get a simulation that uh, agree well with the experiment, and that you have to ask yourself, so what? What have you le really learned uh, with these calculations? OK. So here comes into the picture Roberto Carr, huh? who was sitting in that famous room huh, over there. And where uh, there was, of, of course, another, another, another momentous uh, event in my life. And uh, we favorably worked for uh, uh, night and day on developing the Carparinello method, which has been said by Mark, that uh, it combines uh, electronic structure and uh, molecular dynamics and brings, uh, uh, brings simulation to a newer level. Uh, of accuracy, possibility, enhances the scope. Now, complex chemical simulation can be simulated uh, with a degree of result, realism, which was not uh, possible. And again, we go to the formula number two. That's it, in its full glory. And I, 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 I call on Roberto to check whether it's right or wrong. <laughs> OK. And it was mentioned because I like it for two reasons. I mean, melting of silicon, in my view, was important because you, you, you showed that it was possible. Huh? And uh, so, uh, so without any, any input, just you tell him, this is uh, silicon. So you start with an order system. There is no music here, sorry, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, and uh, at the right temperature, it goes into the liquid phase. But this transition between an order to a disordered system uh, is accompanied by massive uh, chemical transformation. So ke chemists uh, are used for good reason of thinking of, uh, of chemical processes as a succession of single events. So you, have, uh, you broke one, break one bond, then you do, then you go something, form a new compound, then you do something else, you do something else. Uh, here, everything happens together. It's all together. There's no, so here one goes from local, what I call local chemistry, which has its role, its power, to non-local chemistry, where a whole 
fraction, big fraction of the system is involved. And this, without this non-locality, the transformation would not have occurred. Okay. okay, so after that, we became a very famous, huh? started getting prizes here. Eh? I forgot the way we have, uh, uh, I should have uh, put it there, a picture of uh, Roberto and myself uh, in black tie, looking like to uh, satisfy penguins for some prize. Uh, so, uh, so we were famous, we started getting offer, in particular it uh, was attractive for, for me. An offer was made uh, uh, at the suggestion of this uh, uh, gentleman, whom you know my, no, Eric Rohrer, he's a great man, uh, who uh, was the inventor of the scanning tunneling microscope together with Gerbini, and he got the Nobel Prize for that, but he was also a person of great foresight, and he, he immediately after the discovery of the tunneling microscope, he started talking about the nanosciences, uh, uh, and it, which is uh, something, something that has grown, uh, grown, uh, grown enormously, but also he, he started talking, uh, he realized that uh, this development uh, needed the accompaniment of a simulation. And that's why he hired me, uh, where I started, so this again at a nice spot, uh, and uh, started a group there, and there are some our uh, presenter, Anna Andreoni, you can recognize here um, Ursula Rettelisberger, and I cannot go through uh, Francois Gigi, uh, he is, uh, is a, so they are all not very famous uh, scientists, and unfortunately, I couldn't find uh, a picture where we are all together, and so I have to supply another picture here, where this is still me, huh? a, a, a few kilos less, <laughs> and this young lady, huh? with this mane over here, is, who recognizes her? Julia. <laughs> okay? And uh, she's in the audience, uh, so together with Gigi, and actually this group was fatal for this uh, uh, encounter. <laughs> well, now, now probably uh, Julia would be there, and I would be here <laughs> learning from her. Okay. So, but that was a great time. I must say it was, uh, I, I don't want to use uh, uh, vainly the, the word family, but we really lived together day and night. There was no Saturday, no Sunday. It was a great time. And there are other people that come, they were with me, that come, uh, come later. Because uh, uh, Things uh, at IBM were not as uh, stable as they used to be in the past, and then, so I got an offer from uh, uh, the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart, and uh, there I met uh, yet another uh, important person in my life, Ole Krog Andersen, who is uh, in the audience, and this looks uh, really bleak, huh? but it, it, it's not like that. <laughs> That's the <laughs> The, the, the Max Planck Institute in, in, in Stuttgart is much better than this, but it was supposed to be, uh, uh, so this picture was given to me by Carmen Rovira, who is from Barcelona. Unfortunately, she had a problem, she couldn't come. She sent this picture, I said, this was my first. So you imagine a Spanish lady from Barcelona, <laughs> first day of work. <laughs> <laughs> She, she was confronted with this landscape. <laughs> okay, so uh, the, uh, here you can't uh, really see. The, can we dim the light, please? Because whether we, okay, that's slightly better. But uh, here there's Jürgen Professor Marx, Carmen. Uh, hey. I can't even hear, I have to look there. Carla Molteni was here. So again, a bunch of very 
uh, uh, very now famous people that uh, help uh, things. And, and scientifically speaking, this time I, I, the, the kind of together it was a continuation of one, one, uh, uh, one kind of research into the other, a, a, a continuous evolution. And from that time, a different moment, a different code came about. CPMD, who is now uh, I mean, developed and looked after by the people in Zurich at IBM, and CP2K that started uh, uh, while Jürg Hutter was there uh, in my group, uh, and, and now is becoming, he is uh, really the responsible for this thing, and is, 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 is getting more and more popular. Uh, they are both based, of course, in, on the paper, in, in one form or another on the paper that we did with, uh, with Robert. Uh, Woda was, uh, was a big thing, and then Ali and Ali. So Ali was not in my group at the time, but I want to show a movie anyhow to make a point. So we have to, this is water, huh? oxygen into hydrogen. This is, okay. okay, and there are two waters which are different, one water, which has one extra proton, so it's positive. And then there is a, a water with less, uh, uh, with a one less uh, proton, which is negative. Hmm? Of course, uh, these two guys want to combine, huh? and they do in a, in a most fantastic and complex way. That's uh, my blast. Huh? And yes, it is fluid uh, kind of behavior. So this gets rid of the proton. The proton goes through these things over there. So fantastic uh, things. Why do I say fantastic? Because the way old-fashioned chemists uh, were used to think about reaction, it's a bit like uh, this scheme. So you have a molecule, you have another molecule, uh, you bring them together, you have to pass energetic barrier, and you go into the product. Where is this energetic barrier? Is there, can you define it? It's all very complicated. So it's, it's, it's and again, it's a non-local chemistry because the event that brings the proton to move from one water to the other is involves so many actors uh, that they cannot uh, really be described uh, as, a, as a particular conformation of atoms in space. So again, it's a non-local, non-local chemical thing. And in fact, uh, I, I, I say this with great respect. One thing that I learned uh, in my, in my uh, being more and more involved uh, in chemical uh, projects uh, is the fact that the chemists, uh, theoretical chemists, are a very clever lot. Huh? And they, they know many things and uh, should never be unless they made. Of course, many, many people are, are, are aware of these limitations. And it also must be said that the, the standard approach has had so many successes that uh, huh? it's uh, difficult to abandon. But it seems to me that many times, uh, hmm, some of the chemical research, uh, they look like uh, the Procustian bed. Uh, you wonder who is this Procustian and what this bed has to do uh, with research. So Procustian is, uh, we are now in ancient Greece. So Banda Gledago will be happy. And uh, uh, Mr. Procustian was a bandit who sat in a mountain path between Athens and one of the major temples huh? where you went to, to know your future. And of course, at the end of the mountain path, mm, wayfarers huh, were tired, and uh, but, uh, uh, Procuste offered the bed, and of course, the, the pilgrims were very happy to accept it, but there was a catch. So, the guy would put you on a bed. If your legs were longer than the bed, he would sew it. 
if a short I would pull it so as to fit it. So it, it so many papers are like trying to fit something more complicated to a scheme which is doesn't really apply. Okay. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, getting uh, close, uh, going in the, in the year 2000 now. We get from 1930 to 2000, but not so bad. So uh, uh, the I, by this time I stayed many many years abroad, and, uh, and uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, met many people. You mean I felt uh, I felt nostalgia, felt a bit homesick, or more than of Italy or the Italian culture, Italian language, and so on. And I had a great opportunity of uh, coming here without uh, having to abandon uh, the support, the quality, the organization that I, I got used to over the years. And so I moved here first. Uh, uh, it spent the first time, first time, uh, first years uh, of my time at, uh, at uh, CSCS uh, under the auspices, of course, uh, of ETH, and uh, and eventually I moved uh, uh, as main uh, uh, main uh, uh, main job at the at the Università della Svizzera Italiana, and of course I, I have to ask, be thankful to many people here for allowing me the leadership of ETH. The, the leadership of Uzi, the uh, first uh, Marco Bagiolini, and later in a big way, and also uh, Piero Martinoli, and of course now the new one, the new one, Boas, uh, Professor Eret is also, has been very kind to me so far. And uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> You know, human life, I mean, I, 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 that's a factor. I, I mean, if you get uh, uh, to over 70 like me, and you don't learn that uh, nothing is forever, I mean, you lost uh, these 70 years. <laughs> OK, so that's one of the first group that I had here. And there's an important character, unfortunately not here, but uh, 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 Alessandro Laio. Also, well, it's too bad, the qualities, huh? Giovanni Bussi, and so on, and uh, Francesco Gervasio. Uh, well, Alessandro is not here, but that was the time we came up with the new formula, huh? Um, so, oh, but before, sorry, I, before uh, uh, talking about the formula, I, I tell you again uh, what, what the driving things are, huh, which led uh, to the formula, uh, the drive consideration. So to move uh, into these two other, two other axes, one complexity and one time. Why do we want to study complex system? I have a beautiful example by Julia Galli here. Uh, so you know that there's a problem with the energy. Solar energy is a, is, a, is, a, is a possibility, but you get solar energy on only where there is the sun. When at night, uh, you don't get any solar energy. So possibility to store uh, 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 an area in which one would like uh, to move is uh, to, to be able to store uh, the energy and uh, use it uh, at a later stage. Uh, one possibility is to uh, produce uh, so hydrogen. Huh? So if you take two water molecules, you can form two hydrogen and, and oxygen. Hydrogen is a fuel, so you can burn it. Rockets are, are, are powered by hydrogen. Uh, and, and so, uh, so you, during the day, you produce uh, uh, bottles after bottles of H2. And then when you need, you warm your house. You, uh, and so on, and if you, if, you burn, if you burn hydrogen, you produce only water, so no nasty chemicals. 
also, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, look at this, how you, you produce. Huh? So this has been given to me by Julia. This is where the light comes. It's a complex structure with different, uh, there's a soft, uh, uh, soft material, hard materials, there's water, there is a, um, defects in these materials, uh, uh, there are uh, solute in water, temperature, and so on. So all the, all, everything comes together, and, and the whole system uh, works because they all come together. You can't simply separate one thing from the other. It is the system that works. Hmm? And it's very, very difficult to, to, to... I found, I had this talk by Julia not long ago, and I really like, uh, uh, like uh, the choice of the problem, also what she has done. That's, that's a really... Huh? Is, mm, shows how far we have gone and how far we have still to go. And how, 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 new, how many new uncharted territories we have to thread. Okay, the other, okay, so you say, no, oh, but uh, you, why, why do you worry about these things? I mean, you have your simulation, you, uh, you can go a bit issue, uh, you can put your system together, let it run uh, like experimentalists do and see what happens. But there is a major technical problem, which is uh, that uh, the simulations are costly, so you can't uh, uh, take time, and the, the, the cutoff uh, time for, for, uh, for uh, research is, uh, say, three years, because the time PhD students uh, takes uh, to produce uh, his thesis. And, and if you take in consideration uh, all this fact, uh, and the fact also the technological limits, uh, you see that uh, we cannot go very far in simulation. So you start your system, the system evolves, huh? and this evolution corresponds in real time to uh, one picosecond, one nanosecond, and so on and so forth. And so that shows how far we can go. Huh? So if you use a CSS, you can go study system uh, up until, I would say, under one nanosecond, millisecond. You can get it cheaper by using uh, GPU things. Now you can be a millionaire. That's a, that's a remarkable story. This is the show uh, who made uh, money at Wall Street, and then they decided, decided to invest uh, uh, like 60 million of his money into building a new computer, his own computer. Hmm. <coughs> so he has a particular hobby. And, uh, and then if, if I compare the hobby of uh, the show with the hobbies of, uh, say, Berlusconi, <laughs> I think they invested the same amount of money overall. <laughs> But the, the output is not of the same quality. <laughs> okay, sorry, but otherwise we go to bed. Eh? So essentially, the limit of technology, bottom line, that's a, I better one, one, the limit of technology is about one millisecond. Huh? Uh, uh, um, and there are, number of phenomena which are beyond that. One is the nucleation, uh, which I said, or the drug binding, and so on. So, there, so we, we need to push our ability to simulate matter in this region of time, for this length of time. Now, I will not go into the de details, but I mean, because uh, too technical for the, uh, but it, it's a bit like uh, when you move in a very rough landscape uh, with many valleys and, uh, and uh, to go from one valley to, to another. This is Switzerland, as in the Swiss Alps. Uh, and uh, it's a, to, to move, it's a really painful, huh? Because uh, uh, you, have, you have to 
climb mountain passes after mountain passes and so on. So the going is rather, rather difficult. Okay, so when you have some basic difficulties, you, you go to classics for inspiration. And what could be more classic than the Bible? And so, uh, let's say, you go into Isaiah, every valley shall be raised, every mountain shall be made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged place a plain. Hmm? So, let's set, set our research program. <laughs> so, take uh, Switzerland and transform it uh, into devil. <laughs> so, from rough mountain to smooth, uh, to smooth hills, so where it's easy to move, but then, of course, you never forget that you really want to explore there. So you should be able to go from Switzerland to Devon and from Devon to Switzerland. That's called rewading. Okay, and so this is performed by our third formula, which describes what we call beta dynamics, and I'm sure you will immediately see why. Uh, but I mean, behind the formula, there's a very simple protocol, uh, which uh, you can look here. So if I don't do anything, I remain trapped here, and uh, if instead give a help, so to uh, fill, uh, fill the valleys, uh, the going might becomes much easier. And there is an old way, which we developed with uh, Alessandro Laio, and uh, uh, is more modern and more sound way, which we developed later with Alessandro Barducci and Giovanni Bussi. And uh, I cannot uh, help, uh, almost at the end, I can't show in this. It's the sa same plot as seen by a Dutch person, Bert Ensig. So you know that in Holland uh, there are not no, 20 ways of saying rain. Uh, and that's, that's it. So there's our unfortunate walkers. He wants to go out, takes hours to go here, hours to go there. But then, a helpful huh? cloud comes, feels, and it starts to float. It moves over there. Huh? It's a bit shocked, but uh, keep going, going. And then, okay, it's here. And there we go, okay. Okay, so, but that implies, so we go back to our uh, GVEC problem. This can be turned into real science. Uh, for instance, we can calculate uh, the unbinding time for this uh, very important uh, drug, 74 milliseconds, which is far above what, uh, what we could do uh, with uh, brute force and money, like, uh, 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 by simply using uh, theory uh, to help us uh, solve problems. Okay, so this has evolved uh, into something which we have developed uh, with Omar, which I saw him in, in the audience. And uh, that's yet another formula. And uh, that's my present group. Huh? A bit announced by visitors here, yeah? some of them very young. And, 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 and uh, I've always uh, been blessed with many great people, both scientifically, humanly, and uh, I write uh, my formula of the future. The best formula is yet to be written, not yet, almost there. <laughs> I would like to thank all the people that over the years have made uh, my life so very special. Uh, Thanks to the Dreyfus Foundation, of course, and thank you for your kind attention.
I believe there is uh, closing. I mean, we go for food now, no? <laughs> what is the program? Boss. Uh, before that, I wanted just to wish to thank you for this very inspiring talk. And I also would like to, to thank uh, all those who have made this afternoon so very pleasant. So, of course, all the speakers, but especially the organizers. And all of you who have uh, joined us and also traveling from uh, USA, from India, from all over Europe, uh, and uh, probably from north to south, the UK, Ireland, uh, and uh, Denmark, Germany, France, uh, Italy, Spain, and Portugal. And of course, all the various cantons in Switzerland. <laughs> no, I think uh, no, uh, I, there is a special person I would like to thank you. She put a lot of effort and energy. It's uh, Daniela, Daniela Wills, uh, who deserves uh, <laughs> a big hand. Yeah.